Welcome back to another episode of the Disrupting Podcast. This time around, we're so lucky to have Ryan Rosbiani with us. Ryan, what's up? What's going on, guys? Thank you for having me. Honored to be on the platform with you guys. Yeah, dude, absolutely. This is long overdue. Um, and Alex and I both couldn't think of a, a better fitted topic than hims and hers today to have you participate in. So as everyone knows, it's kind of undervalued. It's this healthcare stock juggernaut in the making that continues to outperform in every regard with its disruptive platform. Alex and I have been covering it for a while. Ryan, I know you've been tracking this back to the Oak Tree acquisition days. Um, it's still relatively new to the, the public interface, but continuing to grow with great awareness. We've seen a lot of recent developments that we're going to go over today. Um, Alex, where do you want to kick things off? I think we should probably give people a background on you know, this telehealth, telemedicine business model. Um, you want to kick us off, Big Doug? Absolutely, yeah. So Hems and Hers has, is going into a sector that's been growing rapidly, especially over the last year and a half because of COVID. Um, there's been kind of a little stigma with, uh, especially with the young, young kids, uh, college kids, and they, when they go to a doctor and they get consultate, like get a consultation for less, let's say erectile dysfunction or hair loss, it's, um, it's embarrassing. Uh, not a lot of people like to go to the doctor nowadays, um, whether it be for the pandemic or just because of the mental issue, uh, the stress for that. So what Hims and Hers does is obviously they're directing a lot towards the youth and they have grown substantially over the last year and a half. And their capital annual growth rate for the last three years has been 136%. So they're growing rapidly. Um, consultations have hit crazy high, uh, around 2.6 million, I believe. Last time I read, which is higher than what Teladoc did over a decade. So they're growing and growing rapidly. Um, they're, from the marketing to everything, this, this company is growing very fast. And telehealth is not going anywhere but up. And I think that COVID has for, forced something into play that's going to continue on. And I think that uh, um, other than going to get like psychiatry, one-on-one uh, -on -one talks, uh, these this telehealth is here to stay and i think it's smart to get in into hims and hers in my opinion at this price point before it takes off well i think this is one stock that's benefited amongst many from the from the pandemic where we weren't able to go and visit our doctors their rollout the, the digital consultations obviously there's a convenience layer there um but yeah ryan what are your thoughts on this have you been following teledoc um i know you're a big moderna guy um, so yeah, so healthcare is one of these sectors that I avoid and I try to get, get it through ETFs. Uh, but HIMS is actually an interesting one that you guys actually brought up because HIMS was always fine to me that when ARC bought the ARC G bought into HIMS. I was like, how is this? This doesn't make sense here. And then they shortly after sold it. But when they added, I bought into it because when ARC used to buy sacks, it would just pop off and you could scalp them and make good money. And I looked into them and the business model is interesting. It's it's one that makes sense. The future looking for a forward looking business model for the kind of where kind of telehealth is going for medicine. It's like, hey, these medicines, they're kind of like their licenses have expired and for ED, for hair loss, these things. And there's multiple companies that could do it. And HEMS is just famous for it because they're one of the first ones to actually get out there and kind of publicize it and publicly do it. There, you see ads for them on the trains all the time. There's a lot of copycat companies out there now too that do the same thing. But I think that telehealth is the future. People, COVID accelerated that, like Alex mentioned earlier, and I don't think it's stopping. It's one of those things that people aren't going to go back to the same way we use Zoom now for meetings and business meetings. Telehealth is just the, like, what else can we get put into telehealth? And this is like one of the smartest things that they can do is like, you don't have to, you don't need a blood test for this, you don't need that. It's just like, hey, these are my symptoms and here's the medication. Well, you guys both talked about the destigmatizing sexual health, hair loss care, mental health, um, dermatology, um, you know, all of which has been a primary focus of Hims and Hers for a while now. Um, and they're, they've got this subscription model for prescription, but also over the counter drugs, all of which are online, convenient. Um, I just read too that this morning they brought on Rob Gronkowski amongst you know other great celebrities uh, but it fits that millennial target in every regard for advertising because i was also reading that there was this cleveland clinic um case study that basically found that like 70 percent of males in our demographic would rather do like yard work 
or house chores than go to the doctor, um, which is, you know, I, I had no problem, but these are real numbers. You can't argue with them. I agree. I'm like, the thing is, is that like the, people have always had that stigma, even before COVID it's no one wants to go to the doctor. No one really wants to go to the dentist and to be able to really take care of it in your own hands and have people that are fully certified and be able to talk to you via the phone, via an app chat. Um, I use hims and hers for my hair. Yeah. I'm balding trying to keep it as much long as I can. Um, it is what it is. And I've had nothing but good experiences there. And I've always said people, uh, if you're investing in something, it, the best investment I would ever say is invest in something that you do use because yes. then you're actually going to pay attention to it even further. So looking at hims and hers, looking at the overall health of the company and every single earnings call, they have outperformed every EPS they've outperformed and they have actually increased their guidance every single time when it comes to the earnings. And they didn't even put in perspective of these new partnerships that they have with the likes of Revolve. And they just came out with a new product uh, actually today. Uh, so I think that the future is now looking at the chart. Um, it's going down. It tested and tried to break the downward trend, but it's kind of following along that, that little downward. Once it goes a little more sideways, we'll see another breakout and it'll be above $9 here shortly. And then $10, so on and so forth. But um, it's a healthy company and they're not spending a lot of CapEx to increase their value and get these partnerships. No, they're yeah, not. A, is... Sorry, Danny, go ahead. Oh, please. Go ahead. Yeah, right. I know. So the, the, thing was, the interesting thing about this company is it's not a, it's not a product that people stop taking. So like for hair loss, you're going to take that until you kind of be like, all right, I'm done. I'm just going to let it go. Or uh, sexual health, you're just going to be like, I'm going to use this until I'm just not, well, they, they use it forever. Like you see old guys use this forever. You see young guys have the problem. They use it. It's like they have to use it forever. So it's like their customers are lifetime customers, which is very rare. Like in tech, the, these tech companies fight to keep people as lifetime customers. In this, you're biologically stuck to be a lifetime customer, especially if the product works and matches with you without side effects. They've got their, they've got their customer base locked up forever. Well, that's a brilliant point. Customer retention, co co companies spend a shit ton of money for that. And, you know, these are all vital needs that people need. So I absolutely love the business model because my two, one of my two favorite words is reoccurring revenue. I mean, it doesn't get much sexier than that. But the U.S. healthcare market alone saw th nearly $4 trillion in spending in 2019. Um, and Hims and Hers, in their most recent um, earnings call, they said that their uh, immediate addressable market is like $65 billion, which is essentially just this large sandbox for them to grow in. Um, with their expected 2021 revenue of uh, approximately a quarter billion dollars. So um, hyper growth, which got to love. And I think it's an incredible bargain right now. Um, the price to sales ratio of, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, the current price to sales ratio of just six and the market cap of about one and a half billion. And for a comparable reference, Teladoc is um, you know, the leader in the, the telehealth space with a price to sales ratio of 11. So um, a lot of room for growth here and uh, certainly gaining a lot of momentum on, you know, all the social medias and um, you can't argue too with the lineup of investors, the horsepower of executive power behind this from Mark Andreessen to Steve Cohen, you know, the guy that they wrote billions that show on who also owns the Mets. Um, Peter Thiel is on the board of directors. Um, we mentioned Kathy Woods was a, a short-term investor. She might be back, um, but a lot of high-profile horsepower, um, which, you the, know. The thing, yeah, the thing with, with the leadership, that, that, that is what it is. If you have good leadership and those that have a good track record, then you should have confidence in what's going to happen when it comes to decision-making. Peter Thiel has did a great job being a part of the team with Facebook. He's continuously getting with partnerships with being invested into like the pound here, you name it. He's, I think Hims is a disruptor and an innovator. It's trying to do something faster, grow rapidly than the likes of Teladoc. The track record that they had for the last earnings calls, they have outperformed Teladoc. What Teladoc did back in 2017 is exactly what Hims and hers can do, but do it faster because of the digital age that we are in and they're marketing better. TikTok wasn't back then. And they're just clearly in TikTok. They're uh, obviously on, on Twitter, but their marketing team is a lot better 
than the likes of Teladoc. And they've already made more in consultation, like I said earlier, in the likes of a decade. They've equaled that in the last three years. Well, think about this. And I want to get Ryan's opinion. It's like they are incredibly smart with their marketing. They have these brand ambassadors like Miley Cyrus, Rob Gronkowski, Alex Rodriguez, J-Lo, all of which speak to that millennial crowd. So it's like their target audience, they're crushing it on that. But like most recently, they rolled out, you know, a whole new dietary supplement aimed to curb UTIs. So urinary tract infections are the most common form of outpatient infections in the United States. So it's not attractive subject matter, but it's some real life shit that people deal with. Uh, with more than a half of adult women experiencing this. So it's like, how do you reach those people who aren't enthusiastic about, you know, addressing a UTI? I mean, that's going to ruin your day right there. You do it through creative marketing and with great brand ambassadors who destigmatize this. And I think it's brilliant in every regard. Every regard. Um, I don't think we've seen anything as cruel like this. I, but Ryan, do you have any thoughts on on that alone or anything else? I, yeah, I think uh, you, you guys were saying it's all about destigmatization here, right? Because these are subjects people don't want to talk about. Culturally, we don't talk about them. I don't think there's any cultures that openly talk about this stuff very openly much. I mean, well, now it's getting better, but especially like in the past 10 years, these are things that need to be destigmatized and the best way to do it is marketing. I'd like to see them branch out to more Instagram influencers and TikTok influencers too, not just the big guys. Because Smart. At, we grew up with J Lo and A Rod and Miley Cyrus, but this generation might not know them or care for them. Like A Rod hasn't played baseball in forever. <laughs> J Lo, what was J Lo's last hit song? I don't even know. Like it's been forever. Beats me, man. I think it's time to bring in some fresh, fresh blood into the marketing uh, for this. That is actually, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure the new, new bringing in like four or five Instagram influencers with like a million followers is probably cheaper than J Lo and A Rod. But I do commend them for taking this route because this is what you have to do. Gronk makes perfect sense. He's still in the limelight. They won the Super Bowl last year. It's great for marketing. Make that happen. But like you guys said, it's all about destigmatization and education here. That's the kind of the equation they have to solve. When we think about scalability, and Alex and I have talked about this, and Alex, I want you to share your opinion on this. Like, yeah. you know, I think they're smart in the regard that, hey, inevitably, we want to broaden our scope of services, be able to cover everything under the, the hood, uh, under the sun, per se. But I think they've selectively focused on certain areas where they know they can crush it and scale at the rate that they want to capture the market share and the brand visibility, and then slowly roll out more products. Alex mentioned earlier, we got a new skincare product. We got the new UTI product. Um, it feels like a really clever business plan. Um, Alex, you want to add anything to that? So from looking at the team and looking at the, their finances, the way that they're scaling out is probably one of the best I've seen. And they're not wasting money at all. The, the amount of money that they increase into it, they get like eightfold back. So I Love think those numbers, <laughs> well, that it's, it's, it's fantastic from what, what you're seeing with it. They're very efficient with their money and they're scaling out fast. It's a fast growing sector, but um, when it comes to infrastructure wise and pulling out products, yeah, I think they're being very smart. Um, and when they do create, create a new product, they are now, partnered with like like i said revolve at the beginning they're having a bigger platform than just hey we're here on the digital you can go to a revolve like their website as well and then their shops and you can pick up hims and hers products right there uh, but i think that as they continue to grow they're gonna absorb more people i think that they're gonna get like um what are those ones like white uh, teeth whitening i think yep. that that's gonna be something that's gonna be coming soon um you name it i think that you're at a, at a potentially, it's really not limited to anything. You can buy and, and create and add more products as you go. And they're going to be very selective. So I think that less is more right now. And then as they scale out and they get more, more profitable, uh, because they're actually this close to being fully profitable, which I think the next quarter could definitely be that, uh, like that could be the time. And then 2022 will be the grand scale of Hims and Hers start to branch out and become bigger than what we've ever thought they could be. Man, I'm looking at their subscriptions year over year is growing 76%. Um, they're up to about half a, half a, a million right now. 
um, with the revenue growing about 75% year over year. Um, they also brought in too a brand new chief growth officer. This is a first, um, a new position. Um, and it seems like a really credible guy. Um, the guy's name is, his last name's Chi, but he's a Columbia University MBA holder um, and comes from the space. So it seems like a great, thing, great offer. Yeah. I think the other big thing here is there's a lot of copycats in the space, right? You've got a lot of different companies like Romans and other companies that does very similar things here. I think at the end of the day, it just becomes about proper marketing and execution and making sure that your product is getting to your core audience as fast as possible. I like the, I like what Alex said of not, not them having, of them not adding too many products too fast because you oversaturate your product base and won't be able to target market correctly. But with these two or three or four different products they have now, target market and then to that market that you've already pulled in, you can always bring them into new products like teeth whitening, XYZ, whatever it is. It's just a matter of bringing in your customers, beating out your competition, not just the cost basis, because if you try to go and battle them against cost, that becomes its own different problem. It's about, with these products, what I like the little bit that I've read about when I was going into Hims versus like good RX and all these other companies was uh, the side effects, making sure that they make this product so it doesn't give people side effects because like the hair loss medication can result in ED side effects. These side effects can, uh, and pills can result in other side effects. So it's a matter of finding the correct combination and formula so that your customers hopefully don't receive any side effects and keep coming back. Because if you don't have side effects, you're like, all right, I'm going to stick with these guys. Why would I switch to Keeps from Hims or from Hims to Good RX or to Roman when this thing works? What's, why, why switch? And I'm going to add on to that is that that's a big question that everyone says when I like I tweet about uh, hims and hers or I talk about some kind of, kind of that's something's re relative. People bring up Romans. They bring up Keeps. And I said, well, the thing is, is that Romans is doing good. Again, they're a private company. Keeps is doing well on their own brand. But the thing is, they are limiting Romans and Keeps are limiting themselves to one specific portion of the telehealth. Romans is a men's health, specifically men's health. That's it. Nothing else. Erectile dysfunction, you name it. And they're limiting themselves. And they're they're not going to go anywhere un unless they uh, broaden themselves. And keeps, I think that they, you can do both men and women, but they still have a very specific, like small amount of, of uh, products. Hims and hers, they have opened their wings and they're taking everybody. And yep. yeah, I think they bring in more people. And that's, that's probably the next move. They're probably going to... Like get rid of JLo here in the future. They're gonna need people a little bit more, like Olivia Rodrigo, whoever's the next big thing. JLo's an investor. She, she's an advocate. But you, man, you guys hit JLo's an investor. But uh, the one thing I will say, you're absolutely right. Hims and hers, the branding couldn't be more perfect. I mean, think about it. It like speaks to both genders as direct as possible. If you think about it, if you're, you know, if you're in a couple, like. You know, my girlfriend and I, we buy hims and hers products. I've got my male body wash. She has her body wash. Like you're covering both uh, target markets. I think it's brilliant. Right. Whereas Roman is, you know, it's narrow minded. It's just focused on one thing and really missing out on an opportunity. So I don't see any of those really scaling. Um, you know, I, I agree. Roman's marketing sucks too, by the way. Their ads that you see on trains versus hims ads. They're a little bit too provocative. They're off-putting. Like it's like a little too much. But hims and hers, like you're saying, women's telehealth and sexual health products could be where hims, which is really hims and hers, stands out amongst the rest. Is if they go and attack that target market, which is fifty percent of the market that's on is looked over, usually in this space almost all the time. Go after that market, and you can conquer. You can conquer heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the customizable skincare business is huge. This new partnership they brought on, I mean, is really substantial because, uh, you know, everyone, if you look at just watch any TV from all the big, you know, players in this from like Revlon and um, L'Oreal and I, I don't know all the makeup producers, but they're all minting money in this space because everyone <laughs> needs to be able to match that skin tone. Um and so skin, I think especially because of what the damage does with makeup. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know I'm, I'm still using old spice, but like, I want to find, um, you know, an alternative that's like better and not going to give me cancer down the road. 
right? Yeah. Yeah, that That's is a big, one. That is a big thing. That is a big thing. If you, if you read about it, it's all about like um, all these uh, deodorants and stuff have aluminum in them. Aluminum is the big bad wolf in this space, which causes cancer and all that stuff. So if you can conquer those markets, again, I say they should take their time, slow and steady wins these races, as we've seen. Um, take their time, a few good products, hit the perfect target audiences that are being overlooked. And they, they've got, these are lifelong customers. They're, they're not going anywhere. If I, can, if I may, can I bring up my chart and I'll be able to show you guys what Bust I'm it. Here, let me uh, enable this. Boom. Go for it. All right. So, all right. So I brought, brought up in watching what's been going on with, uh, with hims and hers over the last, last couple of months. And as many people know, I gave my, gave my alert when it double bottomed here in the middle of August. So it was really exciting to see that and to have that opportunity to add on. So you see that downward trend as saw, as we saw earlier with that green line, and it's actually testing that even further right now. So it did the double bottom and then massive purchases happened on September 7th and September 8th, uh, uh, September 7th, because I think that was the Gronkowski announcement that they got that partnership. And now it's following along that downward trend. It's testing it. It's not beating it yet. It needs to find stabilization. I think that we may see stabilization at like worst case scenario, 750. And then it could break out there to try to find your entry point. Because I know everyone, retail investor wise, they're always like having FOMO. They want to break out. They want to have instantaneous, I want profits. I don't want to see a loss in my in my portfolio. But uh, the thing is, um, it looks like it's gaining a little bit of health. Seeing the RSI, it's not overbought. It's around 40. Um, I think that it could probably retest 795 on a, if it remains healthy and then break out and then upward movement. So I think that's, Hims is still showing a healthy, healthy uh, chart. I don't see anything really negative. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? I think the chart looks good. I mean, it's, it went through the de in hell process that most specs do, and this this one took it harder than most, right? Um, but it looks like it's gone through all of its negative de catalysts already, and it's fighting its way up. And I think the biggest thing for uh, which really moves these kind of stocks is guidance and earnings. If earnings are good, guidance is good, it moves it. You've got good news, you've got a good catalyst, it moves it. And I think it could, it's stabilizing itself across that green line, which has been its resistance point forever. And if it breaks above that and it can turn that resistance into support, then you've got a baseline where you can kind of jump off on and kind of make moves on. But again, with, with this thing, I think it just needs a little bit of time and a little bit of news and movement, and then it can get to where it goes. Um, could it make a massive move in the short term if something good comes out? Sure, but I think with this one, earnings are the biggest uh, jump off points for this stock will be around earnings and when they give forward guidance or when there's new news. Because I don't think like a new product is going to move this stock much. Mm. Or like when Gronk comes in, it'll give a little bit of a, a little bit of a pop on it, but then it'll, it'll give up those gains because it's just really hype. Like Gronk isn't going to do much for the company besides marketing or we haven't seen his marketing campaign, right? But I think when it comes to earnings and they're like hey we spent x amount of money on marketing oh oh yeah marketing the gronk ad for example and it resulted us in like x amount more money and oh now we're profitable because of this you'll see a way bigger pop i, I like think it. too you know and both of you guys incredibly astute when it comes to the charts another reason why if you're not following them on twitter get your mind right follow these guys um but the one thing that we touched down earlier is the retention of these customers is really high. And so you figure if you're rolling out, you're broadening your, your product family, you know, Alex might be going there for, a, um, you know, hair supplements or whatever, but now that they have this, that, and the other, you might be buying that too. So your average ticket um, has going up. So we're talking more money. It's not costing them, you know, any additional uh, expenditures just to get that product to you. So I think uh, it's only going to become more profitable in that regard. You're going to be able to uh, broaden your, um, you know, your, uh, your average ticket, which is substantial, right? You want to sell as much product as you can and get it on that reoccurring uh, subscription model, which what business owner doesn't like, right? To, to kind of end this on the note is, is this, is that it's a healthy company. We've always been saying it from Dana to Ryan to me. We know this is a healthy company from marketing to business strategy to financials. Everything that this company is doing from leadership wise is healthy. Um, this this sector is not going anywhere except for up. I think that uh, 
doctors and pharmace like pharmaceutical, they're going to be digital here soon. Like banks are dying out, like brick and mortar. We're seeing more digital wallets. Exact, exact same thing is going to see, see to the health. There's going to be less brick and mortar pharmacy, pharmacies, less brick and mortar doctors. And telehealth is going to be supreme. Teledoc's going to continue to grow. And Hims and Hers is going to catch them, I think, in the next four to five years, if they continue to remain stable, which what we're seeing financially, they are. So if or you have Teladoc the patient- just acquires uh, Hims and Hers. Aqua hires. They need, I think Teledoc has a, well, the biggest issue with Teledoc is that they don't have any really uh, representation in the, in the, in the, the youth. They're not yeah. really targeting the youth and the youth. If you get the customers younger, they're going to continue to grow up rapidly. And that's exactly what hymns are, hymns are doing. So aqua, aqua hire, maybe if not, I don't give a crap. Hymns is, hymns is still going to continue to grow. So I think it's a smart, smart investment. If you have the patience and you're going to reap the rewards down the line. Well, I think it's fair to assume we're going to see more exciting news and developments. And this is not going to slow down. We're going to continue to roll out more um, exciting developments. Um, like Ryan said, it may or may not, you know, stimulate the, the price of the stock much, but I think we can safely assume that the upcoming quarterly earnings will be fantastic. Uh, Ryan, do you want to add anything else before we close out? Sure. I'll just add one final thing on this is, is just like Alex said, the future is telehealth. Amazon's slowly going to be piercing that. Um, people like stuff delivered to their homes. Hims has a great set of products that fits certain needs. And they also have the supplemental products, your vitamins and all that other stuff, which you can always add on to. They've got the packages set up and all that stuff. So I think Hims is a great plan to expand and keep going forward, which I think they can execute it. They're not dealing in a fairly complicated space. It's not like they're trying to build a new microchip or something. So as long as they execute properly, I don't see an issue why this can't become a good value company down the, down the road where it's just like like every other value company. Like, all right, these stable growth, this, X, Y, Z. So they can definitely get there. I think if you're an investor in this, it requires a lot of patience. It's not going to be your overnight uh, gangbuster stock. But I think over time, it could definitely make moves to get to where it needs to be. And I found the ones that take time to get where they need to be are always the best investments. You had to drop the Amazon hypothetical in there. Of them. <laughs> I mean, think about this, fellas. As we know, Amazon is like basically rolled out their own pharmacy this year. Um, they have the logistics that any company would would love, right? Why wouldn't Amazon actually just acquire Hems and Hers? You know, they have everything but the marketing, but the brand. They keep it as an independent, but they roll it over into Amazon scale it quickly overnight. Um, they have more cash than God. And am yeah, I mean, come on, this, this seems like the perfect pivot play. Jeff Bezos, if you're watching this, you're welcome. Invoice is in the mail, but. Uh, That's realistic. I can see that happening. The thing is anything <laughs> can happen. Like, why wouldn't you? It's signed, sealed, delivered package. There you go. You could just buy it. And I think the CEO would be like, fine, you're good. Take it. I'm fine. I'll take I don't know how much it would say to try to act, uh, uh, like acquire it for. I don't know, four or five billion, whatever. Yeah. But that's awesome. I think so. Well, we've said it all. Um, as always, follow us on Twitter. Ryan, join us today. Thank you. Incredibly grateful. Alex, Thank you always appreciative. Me. And until next time, appreciate y'all. Bye, guys.